Hey everyone, it's Jamie from Best Nerd Life. First off, a quick shout out to Future Friends Games for hooking me up with a review code for the early access version of Festival Tycoon through Woovit. Now I don't know about you, but I adore business management games. Ever since playing the likes of Theme Hospital as a child, the idea of setting up customer facing establishments to entice digital denizens to part with their cash has always managed to hook me. Being able to dive into a plethora of in-depth screens full of information about individual item prices and customer moods sounds like a fantastic time to me. So when I saw Festival Tycoon, I was very much interested in trying out this game. But did I get my business management fix with it? And would I recommend it? Let's find out. This is a game made by the solo developer Johannes Gabler. Hopefully I pronounced that right, otherwise known as Drew House. At the time of recording, this is his debut game that he has developed alongside his studies at university in Vienna. In 2020, Drew House actually received funding from the Vienna Business Agency to help launch Festival Tycoon into Steam Early Access. All of this sounds like a very promising start to his career, what about the game itself? Festival Tycoon puts the player in control of a fledgling business with the explicit goal of building a music festival empire. When starting, a name and logo can be chosen for the business, which does give the experience a nice personal touch. This is limited somewhat, as I noticed I couldn't have any spaces in my name, and there was only a handful of basic shapes to choose from when it came to logos. After sorting all this out, along with some difficult settings like how much money the player begins with, the location can be chosen for the first festival. Once this is chosen, the game can start proper. After working through a fairly robust and purely optional tutorial system, complete with videos to visualise what needs to be done, the player can start laying out their festival in the first of two sequential modes. This first mode is creatively named Build Mode. As the name implies, this is where the player plops down the stages, entrances, shops, and other general amenities one would expect to be part of a festival. It's also where the player signs up each band to play on stage, and choose the brands which can advertise around the site in exchange for sweet, sweet money. There's a fairly decent amount of menus to look through, a menu for selecting the things you want to build, a menu for signing the bands, a menu for scheduling where and when they play, among others. There's plenty of things that need to be planned out before moving on, as once the second mode is initiated, there isn't a way of going back to add more things. Luckily, there is a useful checklist included in game if you want help keeping track of what needs to be done. The second mode is aptly named Live Mode. This is where all the preparation in Build Mode hopefully pays off. As the festival is now actually underway, and all the visitors are now on site, many of those previously mentioned menus are locked off. The player can't book more bands, and no more amenities can be built either. This makes the time spent in the first mode super important. Rushing through without taking into consideration all the variables and scenarios one might encounter during live mode is not recommended. I found that having enough VIP areas for visiting musicians really helps. Either that or just paying them off can help them forget their specific and picky needs. Once the predefined period of time has passed and the festival is over, a selection of summary screens can be seen. This details expenses and income, as well as any changes in the company's reputation. There is also a possibility that a certain sponsor or band will have their popularity change, with their fees going up or down. After all this, the loop starts again. The player chooses another venue, jumps back into build mode, and then puts on yet another festival, hopefully with more money to book better bands and attract bigger sponsors. Now that we've talked about the actual gameplay, let's go on to the aesthetics. When I first saw the simple low poly graphics, I was a little underwhelmed. I don't think there's anything wrong with this style, it's just that after seeing so many games trying to pull it off, I'm getting a little burnt out on seeing it. However, as each festival is set on its own piece of land, floating around in the void, I actually started to appreciate the cute, simple and interactive little diorama unfolding before my eyes. Something I can absolutely commend is the style of the marketing images. They include some bold colours and some dynamic artwork. 
I particularly like the logo. A nice little touch is the fact that all the music featured in Festival Tycoon is made specifically for the game. This is reflected in the menu screen and also whilst the bands are playing. A small thing, but it does make sense, seeing this is a game centred around the music industry. In short, the game looks and sounds good. There's a decent gameplay loop a player can get into. It is tailored to promote experimentation and creativity. This is a double-edged sword though. Trying to optimise the layout of a festival is engaging, especially when working with small spaces, but there's only so much gameplay that can be derived from this. An objective-based career mode would be nice. Maybe some kind of overarching narrative? I get that the overall goal is to build my company, but some other direction would help engage me further. Something outside of just the difficulty options would be good. Maybe acquiring a pre-built festival site that is struggling to attract visitors and is in need of better management, i.e. the player. Luckily, as this game is still in development, there's plenty of opportunity to improve the player experience. In fact, between the launch and the recording of this video, there's already been several patches and updates. Settings have been tweaked, bugs have been squashed, and certain themed items have been added too. All promising stuff. I'm personally hoping for more festival sites and more cosmetic items. The existing ones are a treat to play with, but having more sites to play on and more objects to customise said sites would be wonderful. Overall, this early access version of Festival Simulator is a great little business management package. There is enough depth and customization as is to keep me busy, and it is solid enough mechanically for me to recommend it. As with many early access games, if you go into the experience with tempered expectations, I think you will have a good time. I personally didn't find any game breaking bugs, although the visitors do have a nasty habit of bunching together and getting caught on decorations. I would recommend not building any deer stands near to a stage. I am a huge fan of supporting indie devs in their efforts to create a game, especially first timers. I hope that this game is worked on and becomes an even better one. There's nothing more satisfying to me than logging back into a game to see that additional scenarios or items have been added. In any case, if you enjoyed this video about the early access version of Festival Simulator, then by all means like, comment and subscribe, as well as doing all that social media goodness. And as always, keep living that best nerd life.